Who would put for those who know on their rifle? It is only a sticker, don't worry. CZ, of course they would. And I'm glad that I am one of those people that does know because I've owned a number of CZs. Going back to the old CZ452, God had that thing like, I don't know, 12 years ago, I think I first bought that, I can't remember. I think it was even before I even started this channel. Absolutely love CZs. I have kind of come away from them in the past and you know, I've, I won't mention other makes, um, but I did get another make of rifle and then I had problems with that. So I ended up trading it for a CZ. There you go. CZ457 LRP, long range precision on the table. What do you think of that? Isn't that a thing of beauty? My God, it is absolutely lovely. Let me just show you my 457. I've got the slim down version. Why did you get the synthetic rack? Well, this kind of come out before this did, but I kind of wanted an all-rounder, something that I didn't really mind knocking about, taking to the farm, hunting, plinking, bit of range work, good all-rounder. Taking that hunting, yeah, it's a little bit heavy and it's just a bit nice, isn't it, to just get bashed about and stuff. But I kind of wish this had, well, I don't really, but no, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of wish I'd knew about this uh, a few months ago um, because I ended up, and I'm not, I'm not sort of moaning at all because I kind of built myself something special anyway. You've probably seen this, guys, the Tika T1X in the MDT chassis. So I kind of built myself a nice long ranger but maybe if I had known about the 457 LRP, maybe I would have just purchased one of them. Who knows? But would you have two 457s? No, I don't know. I do like the Tiki T1Xs anyway. Anyway, this, like I said, is the 457 long range precision. Let me throw out some specs for you. So reading from my tablet off uh, CZ's web website. So overall length is 1,010 millimeters, barrel length is 525 millimeters or 20 inches, weighing in at 3.8 kilograms, that is unscoped. Caliber is 22 LR, one in 16 twist in the forged barrel, fluted barrel as well. Magazine capacity, uh, five rounds, standard CZ mags, I'll show you more about that shortly. Um, detachable magazines as well, doesn't come with sights, so you've got to throw on a scope. Adjustable trigger, adjustable cheek piece, uh, adjustable length of pull as well. The stock is in fact a wooden stock, it's a beach stock, which is over molded with like this soft touch rubber. And it is really nice, really nice. Uh, threaded on the end of the barrel, a uh, half inch by 20 UNF, and it's got a compensator as standard, straight out the box. What is not to like about this rifle? Oh, and it's ambidextrous stock as well. Again, that's pretty standard these days. Right, let's take it from the top. In fact, do you know what? I'm gonna just jump straight in to accuracy. I'm gonna give you my worst target first. No, actually I won't, I'll give you my best target. This is my best target. This was 100 yards using SK Standard Plus, just show you a box there, SK Standard Plus. These are really good, really good. They're pretty cheap and I've been using these now for probably the last six, six or seven years, something like that. Really do like this ammo. I, you know, I went from using CCI ammo as like a standard, you know, CCI mini mags as like a standard uh, testing ammo. I, I just use this now. It's, it is really good stuff. Apart from it's a little greasy. It's like they dip the stuff in cooking oil or something. 
But, I don't know, I guess lubrication is a good thing when it comes to shooting. Yeah, I'll leave that there. Um, moving on. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, SK Standard Plus 40 grain ammunition. That, ignore that, that is my zero, so just ignore that. And then, five shot groups, 100 yards. Yeah, baby. Doing five shot groups now. Look at that, I'm well happy with that. And that is shooting, there's another group as well. Again, five shot group. That is shooting off, as, as you can see in the footage, shooting off a foam action sports rest. So not off a bipod, which would probably be a little bit more stable. Definitely shooting off my shooting slate, that'd be rock solid. So yeah, I could have got these groups even tighter, but I was just shooting off. I had a lot of stuff to carry that day. So I just wanted to keep the weight down. That's the beauty of those foam action sport. So that is SK Ammo. Next is uh, Hornaday. There's the um, box for that. That's Hornaday Lead Round Nose Varmint Express. Um, not as good, not quite as good as the, well, that's terrible. I think that's down to user error on my part. Five shot groups again. They do get a little bit tighter as we go down the target. But I, I did use CCI, mini mags, high velocities, all over the place. Uh, I don't know what I've done with the target um, for those. All over the place. I've probably actually binned it accidentally on purpose because it was just a, a horrendous target. But, like I say, get a decent bipod on this, shoot it off a shooting sleigh or something like, you know, a bit, bit more rock solid, then those groups are really gonna tighten up. But, dude, it is MOA. It's absolutely MOA. Let me just refer, I'm throwing these targets over and it threw out. That is MOA. Definitely, that's almost half MOA, would you say? If I was really getting my shizzle together, that'd be, Half, a, uh, half MOA, definitely. Right, let's show this thing in a little bit more detail. Excuse my test scope. It's just an old hawk sidewinder. Does the job, that's what I tested this thing with. You know, you haven't got to sort of go really sort of mad on glass. This thing was doing the job. Right, taking it from the butt pad end or the recoil pad end, soft rubber, really nice there. Um, Bit of a texture as you can see these sort of panels really nice you know can't fault it ever so comfortable adjustable as well by adjusting these um star slots here or hex what well, not hex but star screws whatever you want to call them just them you can adjust uh, it's got plenty of adjustability same with the cheap piece ambidextrous as well that is like a soft polymer so that's really uh, quite nice comfortable winter's day it's uh, or winter's days rather quite warm on the cheek as well so really really quite quite nice uh, you can fit a, a monopod on there if you want because there is a bit of picatinny rail so you can really sort of get this thing set up however you want so it's really yet uh, really yet uh, Good, the adjustability is there are actually some uh, shims in here so you can adjust the length of pull uh, i'll show you them when i'll show you the box really cool and you've in fact I, at first i thought hang on they've copied my idea of skateboard tape well it's probably not my idea but this texture in here is actually a stippling so when you are really pulling this rifle in let's try and get that on camera when you're really sort of pulling this rifle in using the hook here, it's got a nice stippled texture there, which is really, really nice. I love the shape of this stock. Really, really love it. It is so user friendly. Even for a lefty like me, look how thick that pistol grip is. I mean, I've got pretty big hands, or well, I'd probably say average size hands, and there's loads and loads of room, and you've got Bit of a thumb shelf there. Sorry, just going off camera there. A thumb shelf there to sort of 
I'll try and do this on camera for you. I mean, you can put your thumb there, you can put your thumb round. A lot of people sort of just rest their thumbs there. More than adequate, loads of space. Really can't fault that. You've got, as you can see, some real nice stippling there in this soft touch uh, coating on this beach stock. Really, really nice. It just offers loads of grip. Pretty much even anywhere that you grip this rifle, whether it's on the stippling or not, it really does offer loads of traction. Two big panels either side, or well, one big panel either side of the fore end there. And then underneath a huge panel there. And then you've got uh, studs there for a sling and a bipod, if you wish. Uh, that is, I'm not taking the sticker off because this is a loaner, but you've got CZ's logo sort of underneath that. Really, really nice. Wow, that's getting heavy. Whew, need a rest. Um, what you will know as well, I mean, that's pretty much um, showing you everything on the stock. Free floating barrel as well. Not mm, tiny little bit of flex there, but it's what it is, isn't it? I mean, it's not going to affect anything. Do you need a fluted barrel for a 2-2 rimfire? Because obviously fluting is basically for cooling, uh, unless you can shoot pretty damn fast but it does look really, really nice. I think this would look even better in stainless. I think they should do a stainless version. That would just be, or oh, it'd just be to die. Um, and then where we got to, we've just about covered the stock. Like I say, the stock is just, just really, really nice. I mean, I think that's what attracts a lot of people to this rifle. It's just the, the coloration and the shape and the adjustability of this stock. It really, really is nice. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention QD mounts there. So you can, again, throw on um, a sling of some descri description. But I really do love this stippling, these little panels here, just to offer uh, plenty of grip. Really love that. I'm, I'm quite sort of uh, excited about that. Is that bad? Does that sound weird? A bit excited about that. I don't know. Probably does. Then let's move on to now the bolt. At first, you can you may have noticed this huge bolt handle. You may have noticed that. It's like having a golf ball attached to the bolt. At first, I was like, um, oh, I'm not sure if I like that. And then the more I used it, I thought, actually, that's quite good. It's quite good. Does it need to be that big? No, not really. But it does really aid. Yeah, it does aid loading. Not that it you need loading needs aiding on a CZ, if that makes sense. But, yeah, I like it. Like I say, at first I was like, hmm, does it need to be that big? I mean, the standard... So your standard sort of CZ is pretty big. Anyway, you know, I have no problem with that. I think that's ideal for me anyway. But I don't know, it's just a bit more goochiness, I think, on CZ's part. You know, it just adds to, just adds to ease of use. I wonder if you can actually get those. I bet you can sort of add those on to, uh, a standard bolt, I'll have to, hmm, don't know. I don't know how you'd put that on, but interesting. Maybe it sort of just pushes on somehow. Hmm, you never know. You might see my uh, my 457 wearing one. I don't know whether it would probably look quite cool, actually. Hmm, I'll have to look into that. Or I might just give this one back minus that. No, I won't really. Okay, so... Moving on to, well, we, we've talked about the bolt. Let's take the bolt out. So stripping the bolt out, or field stripping, should I say, is pretty much like a centerfire now with these new CZ457s. So you just basically press this lever here and the bolt will come out. I'm trying to do it 
on camera. I've just knocked my patch. Let me straighten the patch. Let me just tidy up, guys. Right, so there is your bolt. I mean, CZ bolts are just absolutely bomb proof, rock solid. You just cannot fault them at all. Okay, there's your loaded or cocked indicator there. I'll show you that. Let's put the bolt back in. Let's show you without the bolt and just give you a bit of a look. I mean, also take a look at my uh, 457 uh, sy synthetic review. Same sort of review, really. Same rifle. Let's put that bolt in. Oh, just CZ bolts. They are just, just absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Then you've got a manual, I call them a Remington 700 style safety catch there. So, self-explanatory, really good safety catch. Like I said, exactly the same, exactly the same rifle, just in a different stock and without that big uh, bolt knob there. Hmm, <laughs> watch this space. Um, magazines, so your standard CZ uh, polymer magazines. I think I've got a steel one of these somewhere. Again, rock solid, they'll, they'll last forever, you look after them. You can get the 25 round, um, I call them banana style uh, magazines. I think in the 457, uh, Synthetic video, I used one of them. It's just, so it, it was just less reloading. Uh, maybe worth getting one. Might look out of place on this, to be fair. Looked all right on that one, but uh, but no, the magazine's absolutely brilliant. Five rounder, you get one as standard uh, with the rifle. There is mag release. So it's that little lever there. That was my gripe, actually, on the, um, on the on my four five seven when I reviewed it was that is plastic or polymer, so uh, would that eventually break off? Possibly, that would be nice if it was if it was metal. It's definitely polymer. Wedding ring test, magnet test. Yeah, it's definitely polymer. That is. That's metal on the silhouette. Is that? Oh, that feels, that's polymer. Oh, CZ. No, 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 no. I'd like a metal one, please. Hopefully that won't break off in the future, but that's interesting. I've only just noticed that, guys. Let's give it a magnet test. Yeah, that's, uh, that's metal on the silhouette. Whereas on the 457, ah, oh, they've gone polymer. Oh, naughty, naughty CZ. So that's probably my only gripe with the 457, is just that mag release being polymer. Would it eventually break off? Who knows, who knows? Um, the actual uh, trigger guard is metal, which is, you know, which is nice. They've definitely improved these trigger guards on the 457. The old, the older style CZs, the trigger guards were just, it was literally just like a bent piece of bar. They, they really weren't pretty, but they've improved that no end. They just look really nice now. Uh, you do get a 25 MOA uh, rail, Picatinny style rail with CZ's logo on the side. Um, that is included as standard, ready fitted to the rifle. So that'll help you do some serious long range stuff uh, with this rifle. That, by the way, just show you that it is cocked. So there's your cock load, cocked indicator or loaded indica indicator in the back of the bolt there. Show you the other side. Excuse my rusty mounts there. Bit embarrassing, sorry about that. 
What a cracking little rifle. What it ain't, it ain't little, it's pretty big. Just a stunning, stunning rifle. Let me show you the box that it comes in. Nice, environmentally friendly cardboard box. That is what we like, none of this plastic rubbish. That is what comes in your box. Why have I got a Chiapa thing in there? I don't know. Comes nicely protected in like this um, gun sock as well. There are your shims for the uh, length of pull. Okay, so you get a few more shims there so you can stretch it out, which is nice. So yeah, nice box. The sort of box that won't ruin the environment but you'll still just chuck it up in your attic forever anyway. Just a stunning rifle, guys. Let me show you the uh, manual. Manual is pretty good. I do like lots of pictures in, in my manuals, if I'm honest. I um, don't know, does that say a lot about me? I don't know. Um, but it, all your usual sort of safety do's and don'ts. Um, pretty in depth. Can't really fault it actually. And what I will say is, actually there is some nice colour stuff at the back. So, so yeah, it tells you, oh yeah, tells you how to adjust the trigger. I'll measure the trigger actually in a minute, but you can adjust the trigger, it shows you how to do that, but you have got to take the stock off, which I guess is a little bit of a pain. But the trigger felt pretty nice. It really did. So nice exploded diagram right there. Love that. Tells you about the safety. So yeah, not a bad manual. Not bad at all. Let's measure the trigger. Let's get the trigger pull scale. See what this baby's doing. Okay, so. It is cocked. Safety check, obviously it is safe. So let's just give this a pull. Ooh, that's quite heavy, really. You could, that could be cranked down, but that's three pounds, 10 and a half ounces there. So should we give that another one? Let's give it another one. Just for argument's sake. Might have pulled that a little bit hard. I'll probably pull it even harder there. So let's say three pounds, 10 ounces on the, uh, on the trigger. Just a dead nice trigger. I mean, oh, CZ triggers again, really nice. Let me just pull that. Let me just remind myself about this. Yeah, that's a nice trigger. Nice trigger. I love it. I really do love it. Like I said, would I have got one of these if I'd known about it? Well, I wouldn't have known about it because I started getting the ingredients for my Tika way before, um, way before this thing came out. But um, two great rifles here. In fact, let's get, let's just get the other one up on here. I don't know if I've got the room to show you. Three awesome rimfire rifles right there. But the LRP is really something special. If you are into, to your, into your target shooting, real accurate shooting, nice long range stuff, you know, you really want to stretch out the uh, 22 LR, that is the perfect rifle to do it. It is an absolutely spot on, well made, I mean, look at look at all these extras you've got. Heavy fluted barrel, compensator. Let me show you, show you the compensator close up. You know, that is just so cool. This teak has got a rubbish vortex uh, flip cap that just keeps flipping. Flipping, driving me mad. Oh. Just an awesome rifle. Really, really awesome. I think these are gonna be really popular. Or you could build yourself something special. Ain't gotta be a Tika. You could throw a CZ in an MDT chassis. Of course you can. Or if you just want something hunting, 
TZ or Tika, you know, in the standard stocks. So there you go, just throw in, throwing out some options for you. I'm all about options, you know, mate. Let me get rid of that. Oh, that flip cab cover. Insane. But yeah, the CZ457 LRP, long range precision. Just have a closer look. Just let the gun do the talking. It is just a beautiful, beautiful rifle. It really is. For those who know, we'll just leave it at that. Anyway, that is Rack and Load. Thanks for watching this review of the CZ457 Long Range Precision. That is Rack and Load. See ya.